Hello fellow traders and investors, Steve Gans here wanting to share with you a lot of the great new features that OptionStrat has added over this last weekend. There's a host of them I'm going to go through here pretty quickly. Uh, probably the first one at the top of the list is the ability to now model futures. If you haven't traded futures before, um, probably the most uh, liquid future is the slash ES, which is the S&P 500 futures contract. Um, if you haven't traded futures before, you need to learn about them first. There's a lot of things that go along with that, but let me just show you how this works. So the futures all start with a slash. So if we go to ES futures, know that futures contracts have expirations. And I'm not going to get deep into this, but the futures contracts expire. This one expires. Our current one expires in December. But not only does the futures contract expire, but within this particular futures contract, you have a host of different options expirations. So again, we're just going to touch briefly on this. Um, if you're not familiar with all this, certainly you don't belong trading futures. But uh, And if you are trading futures, you're probably already going to know all about this. So just know that little caveat. But with futures, you have the ability now to trade quite a few different things. For example, um, Bitcoin futures. Not anything I've ever traded, but if you're a Bitcoin person, um, you have the ability to do Bitcoin futures. Of course, you have the ES futures, the NASDAQ, the Russell uh, you can trade bonds. I think bonds are BZ if I remember. Oh, no, crude, crude oil is BZ. So you can trade crude oil and all sorts of different futures contracts. So one of the questions that comes to mind is why would a person trade a futures contract um, as opposed to trading, uh, let's take the ES for example. So and I reached out to my broker and I asked them about that. Um, I've traded futures before. I don't trade them a great deal. I mainly trade the SPX, which is the large index. So I asked the question, why would someone trade the uh, S&P futures contract instead of SPX? Um, they said one of the most common reasons at my broker, which is TD Ameritrade, is that the futures contracts don't fall under pattern day trading rules. Pattern day trading rules require someone to have an account larger than $25,000 if they're going to trade actively. So he indicated that's probably one of the biggest things for futures. Um, check with your own broker. And of course, I'm talking about the US. So this stuff may vary internationally. A second reason uh, possibly is that the futures trade round the clock. They trade 24-6. Now liquidity can be very, very light at night. So you got to be very, very careful of bid-ass spreads. But um, and while the SPX theoretically trades round the clock, uh, at TDA, I can't put in a trade uh, after market hours. And I asked them about that. And they said many brokers, while SPX does trade round the clock, many brokers don't trade round the clock uh, SPX because the exchange fees are higher during the night. Bid ask spreads are much, much wider, which means... Um, if you don't really know what you're doing, you can get taken advantage of. So again, not going to get deep into this, but but just know that futures are now here. You can come in and model futures. You know, I can come in and look at the next uh, S and P futures contract here expiring in December, and I can, you know, model out. Uh, let's say I want a neutral trade. I can model out a Condor, and I've got all the capabilities that I would have with uh, SPX or any stock uh, variation. So great to be able to now handle futures here. Um, now I want to take a look at something called Flow, which many of you have seen in the past. Um, but there's there's some great enhancements to this. So we now have news flow. So with news flow, I can come in and I can look at all the news that's hitting the markets here. Um, let me just hide my, my face here so we're getting full screen. So I can look at all the news that's hitting the markets. I also have the ability to narrow this down if I want. Maybe I only want to see news about Tesla for example. Um, so again, I can kind of narrow that down however I want. Now I can also choose to get alerts. So I can come in here, set up filters for this, 
And under the filters, I can enable alerts. Uh, those alerts will come to me via the desktop or mobile push notification if I'm running the app. So great to be able to get alerts on things that I want to keep track of. Um, I can also, of course, with flow, uh, I should just go back to our regular flow here. On regular flow, I can also come in and rather than search on just Tesla or whatever, I can search on futures here as well. So I could come in here, let's take off Tesla, and I can put in slash ES and uh, say that I want to be notified of any flow changes in the ES. Um, and of course, you'll have the ability to filter by buy side, sell side, all those different areas. So in addition to just the historical flow and the news flow, we now have what's called congressional flow. Now, this is pretty cool because a lot of people consider uh, quote unquote congressmen to be maybe sometimes in the know. Some people might at times call them the smart money. Um, and part of this is because they understand, in some cases, what laws they might be passing or changing that might change uh, aspects of a complete industry. So while theoretically they're not supposed to be trading off that information, um, for some reason they seem to have a really, really good track record in general, uh, better than your average investor and trader. So, you know, maybe they're not supposed to, but maybe they, they do have some sort of inside knowledge, sixth sense, whatever you want to call it, I don't know. But uh, anyhow, we can now come in and see uh, by congressperson exactly what they might be buying or selling. Now, it's important to note that they have a 45 day window in which to report this information. So if I click on this, this got reported, the fact that Lloyd Dodgett bought uh, on 10-4, uh, uh, we reported him buying shares of J&J, &J, but that actually traded all the way back on September 7th. So bottom line is these are not current trades. So these are not anything that would probably impact short term trading for someone. But it might help to be able to look at, you know, how someone uh, has acted in the past 45 days. This is not unlike people that might follow Warren Buffett. He doesn't report his trades as he makes them. But when he does his quarterly reports for Berkshire Hath Hathaway, he does say what he bought and sold over the past uh, certain period of time. So let's say I want to come in. I can even narrow this down to, let's say, I just want to see what John Curtis is doing. So I have the ability to do that. Uh, of course, set up those filters, get notifications, all that sort of stuff. So that's congressional flow, and we can see what they're buying and selling. Now, another important thing that people like to look at is something called insider flow. So insiders are corporate executives within a corporation. So now I can come out and I can see within a particular corporation, what might someone be doing and at what general size. Um, so I can see that Christina, whoggle that is, uh, at Leggett and Pratt, um, you know, bought shares. Now again, same thing here. They have to report this, but they don't have to report this for a certain period of time. So even though an insider bought or acquired shares, um, it may not have been today. So as soon as those are available, they get reported, but always come in and look to see exactly when the transactions took place, if that's important to you. So again, it's always good to see what the insiders are doing. Are corporate executives willing to own significant shares of their own company? Um, so again, great thing to have uh, access to. Now, a final thing that I find very, very important for me personally, and this is gonna get mildly uh, deep, so let me just pull up, um, I'm just going to pull up SPX, and this has to do specifically with looking at volatility in time spreads. So time spreads can be a very, very uh, confusing trade to people. Time spreads are often called calendars, diagonals, similar trades uh, to that. So let me come in and build a put calendar spread and we'll model that out. So this is a put calendar spread right here. Basically, if you're not familiar with calendars, I'm not gonna get horribly deep into this, 
But a calendar spread is usually a long calendar spread, I should say, which is what most people, if you're trading a calendar, tends to trade, is they are going to sell a front month option. In this case, they're selling a front month put that expires on 1117, and I'm buying the exact same strike further out on 1229. So this is a basically a 30-day spread. So I'm selling something 39 days from now, and then I'm buying that exact same option 81 days out, and that's my trade. Now this is uh, if the market stays where it is, this is not a directional sort of trade. This trade is designed as a play on volatility and or a play on time decay. So as time advances, our line is going to, our T0 line is going to move up here. I can advance that. You can see the T0 line creeps up. If our price doesn't move, we get great decay here. And that's how this trade is designed to work. However, one of the very odd things about time spreads and the way that virtually every software program out there models them is they model them as though they are positive vega. So positive vega means that if volatility goes up, profitability is going to come into this trade. Now, while it's common, you will commonly hear it said that a calendar is a positive vega trade, I'm going to tell you that's not necessarily true. It can be true, but it's not necessarily true. And up until now, there hasn't been a way to effectively model how a calendar moves. So if you don't have an interest in calendars, uh, don't get bogged down in the details of this. But if you are a calendar trader like I am, um, it's really critical to recognize this. So the first thing I want you to note is that if you take a look at a calendar trade, we can see in this particular trade that, uh, let me advance our, our day forward a little bit. We can see, for example, that our break-evens are at 42.85 and 45.22 if we go 13 days in. All right, now let's take a look at what happens if volatility goes up. If volatility goes up, we can see that those spread out really, really wide. Well, that would be pretty cool if that were, in fact, the case. If volatility goes down, this thing gets very, very narrow to the point where all of my profit is, is going out of this trade. Again, in this case, we're starting at a volatility of 15.7. And if volatility drops out of this trade, this trade goes to a loss rapidly. And you'll notice the size of the tent. Look what happens to our tent. Our tent shrinks and expands a lot based on volatility. Now, a time spread is the only type of trade that I'm aware of where the tent will move on you. Um, if you've ever traded an iron condor or if you traded butterflies, you know that tent is fixed. You can slide volatility up and down all you want, but the, the break-evens on that tent stay the same. Our T0 line will move, but the tent stays the same. In a calendar or a time spread, volatility changes the size of the tent. So again, if you're ever going to trade these, you need to recognize that because if you think this is where your break-evens are when you enter the trade, that is not where they're going to be when IV shifts. So let's talk about IV shift now. In the past, modeling software in general um, when you slide this slider, it is changing the volatility of both our short strike and our long strike equally. That's not how the markets generally move. So what generally happens when we have an incident like happened this uh, last weekend with uh, bombings in Israel, etc., on Monday, volatility spiked up. But if there's a news event like that and people go out to purchase protection, which uh, buying a lot of puts uh, rapidly is what tends to drive up volatility um, and, you know, and spike that, spike that volatility. If somebody's going to go buy protection, are they going to be more apt to buy protection on a fast event like that in the earlier period or in the later period? 
Well, I would say to you that most people are just going to want to protect themselves for a week or two until they figure out what's really going to happen here. Because, of course, if you go further out to buy that protection, you're going to pay more for it because it's protecting you for a longer period of time. So basically, people are going to go to the front period here, and this front period volatility is going to go up, generally speaking, more than the back. We now have the ability to monitor those separately. So let's just come in, and you can see that the November expiration is at a 15.5 volatility. December's at 15.9. Let's just come in and say that um, my theory here is accurate, that if there's a big volatile event that's going to spike fear in the market, it's going to spike it earlier uh, in earlier strikes more so than later strikes. Well, if that happens, look what happens to our trade. It loses very, very rapidly when that happens. And why does that happen that way? Well, again, if we are short these uh, 4365s, and they spike in value, that's going to hurt our trade if these short ones go up in value and our long ones don't change that much. Now, let's just say there's a slightly different scenario. That different scenario might be that some announcement comes out that, um, you know, that we're going to do whatever. There's going to be some big Fed announcement, for example, <clears throat> that's going to occur on December 20th. All right, do you think that's going to have more impact and fear in this front month? Or do you think people are more likely to maybe buy options expirations protection right after whenever that announcement is going to take place? Well, I think most people would say they're going to be buying these that are going to happen shortly after whatever event that's going to be. So let's come in here, take a look at that. If we go to the December 29th, and again, we're long those, and those go up in volatility. In other words, they gain value because more people are buying those out of fear, and they're not buying these so much. Look at the favorable implication that has on our trade. Now, these are things that... Um, there really isn't any other software out there that I'm aware of that can model these things separately the way we can here. And for me or anyone that's looking to trade calendars or diagonals, commonly known as time spreads or horizontal spreads, having this ability and understanding how to use it is really, really uh, important. So at the end of the day, I just wanted to share this with everybody, show you how I think these are some you know, some excellent new additions. I should point out that these are only coming to the paid versions of the software. If, uh, if you're in, um, you know, just using the base uh, non-paid version, you're not going to see it show up in your platform. But these are some great new tools that has advanced the product. Um, we wanted to make sure that we shared them with everyone. And as always, if you have any comments, questions, etc., cetera, uh, please make sure that you note them below. I will say that's not really a place for tech support. If you actually need tech support or better understanding of some of these, then I would urge you to go through the normal process of, um, first of all, going in and looking at the FAQs, the tutorials, uh, and then ultimately, if needed, reach out, contact um, to get some help. So we're going to wrap this up here at this point. Thank you, everyone, and uh, appreciate your time.